Hi, this is The Advisor and with Stacey Chalemi from the founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have a very special guest. It's Elliot Katz, and he has some great information to provide to us today. He's going to talk about a very interesting topic. He's a coach and he coaches men. And so, Elliot, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Um, you know, the topic is amazing. So let everybody uh, l learn a little bit more about yourself. Okay. Hi, I'm Elliot Katz. I, I'm a retired political speechwriter, actually. When I worked, I was a speechwriter for politicians. And a number of years ago, I, uh, I, you know, I was married, I got divorced. And then, like a lot of people, at first I blamed the other person. Then I came to the point of asking myself, what do I have to learn from all this? I don't want to go through this again. Right. So I really set out on a journey. I started by talking to other men. And the more, more, more I met, I spoke to the more I realized, you know, we're all confused. A lot of men are confused. Right. I read books and they really didn't say anything. It was only when I went to that, back to the timeless wisdom that for generations, fathers used to teach their sons about being a man that I realized it coincided with what I heard women complain is lacking in men today. They don't show leadership. They don't make decisions. They don't take responsibility. They don't make the woman feel safe and protected because they've heard all these messages about, you know, develop your feminine side, be sensitive. And it's all very nice, but women is almost, you know, you're not allowed to say, it, but women do really want a man who's, who's, who can show leadership, but not controlling, but someone who doesn't always say whatever you want, you decide. Right. So, so I wrote the, this first book that I, I was telling you about, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants, Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man. And, you know, at first I thought I was writing it for myself and my friends. Yeah. And the response was incredible. It was translated into 24 languages around the wow. world. Wow. And the latest deal I made was with a publisher in Saudi Arabia who's publishing it in Arabic. But it was like Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa. It really showed to me that, you know, men have to learn this stuff. And this generation of men, for whatever reasons, societal reasons, a large amount of divorce, and that young men weren't taught by an older man what it means to be a man. And I think that's, it showed that, what you know, cultures may be different around the world, but human nature is similar. And the nature of men is like, he needs to learn what it means to be a man. It doesn't come naturally to a lot of men. So that was really uh, a fascinating experience. And I, as, like you were saying, I started coaching men. Men would contact me and, you know, they said, my marriage is falling apart. And I said, well, you know, you got to act like a man. You can't just say whatever you want. <laughs> said, Don't ever say whatever you want. Just say, <laughs> you know, she asks you for a decision, your input on decision, make a decision. Just, you know, sometimes the decision is all, isn't all that important. Often it's not all, all that important, but she wants, she asks you to make, she asks for your input on a decision, make a decision. If you see a problem, like one thing I would, I would say to men, and, and I was the same, and men would say, you know, I come home, I work hard, I come home, I ask her, what do you want me to do? Just, what do you need for me to do? I'll do it. Just, and, and they think I'm, I'm being a great husband. I ask her what to do. I do whatever she tells me to do, I do. I said, well, that's good, except that's really being a mother's helper. It's not really being a father and a husband. Right. So, you know, help her out, definitely. And especially when you have little kids, it's a lot of work. But be aware of what's going on in your family. Like, you see a problem, you know, do some research. Step forward. I said, I, I see this problem. I have, I think I found the solution. Don't just go up to her and say, what should we do? That, oh, don't do mm -hmm. that. <laughs> <laughs> so make, make research and find, come forward with a plan that you want to suggest. I think this is the way we can solve this problem. Or right, I'll do this. If you do this, we'll get it done show leadership that's really you know and the irony is a lot of men are are in leadership roles in their jobs but when they come home they can become like you know passive just tell me what to do i i'm tired just tell me what to, i'll do it it's like it's, it's very frustrating for a woman um when, when a man does that you know women have told me when a man does that she, she doesn't feel safe and protected and that's mm -hmm. that's really important when a man steps forward makes a decision sees a problem she feels safe and protected. And that's what she wants. And the, you know, and these days that may sound old fashioned, but let me tell you, women have told me they want that. They want a man who makes them feel safe and protected. So it's really uh, important to take that like leadership role. And and the irony, the irony is, I shouldn't laugh, but sometimes I'll speak to groups, and the men will say, "No, no, that's not what women want." <laughs> and the mm -hmm. woman sitting beside him will say listen to what he's saying. This is what we want. And right. It's just like I was saying, this men haven't learned it in this generation. So the next step was, you know, women would read the book. 
that I wrote for men and say, well, how do I get my man to take charge? Like, you know, I, I'm tired of making all the decisions. I, I'm tired of yeah. having to take charge. One would say to me, when I always have to tell a man what to do, it makes me feel like he's a child and I'm his mother and I don't want to be his mother. Right. And I don't want to be intimate with a child. Yes. <laughs> So, and, you know, and men think, like I said before, they think I'm the greatest guy. I'm, 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 I'm a good guy. I'm doing all these things. I'm doing whatever she tells me. So that's what, so I wrote this new book called how to get your man to wear the pants so you don't have to. And really it's like, you know, you have to speak to a, I'm sure you do this. So you have to speak to the person the way they need to be spoken to. Yeah. Just say to him, you know, if he says, you know, and really I started with the first date. You know, man calls up a woman. Would you like to go out Saturday night? She says yes. What well, What did you have in mind? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? Oh, don't don't ever say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, be a man with a plan. Be a man with a plan. Says, and she'll say, you know, and and women. Is, you see, I understand men. Men will say, well, whatever you want, because he's afraid if he chooses something and she doesn't like it, she, she won't like him, or he'll she'll criticize him. Right. I say, yeah, but that, you know what? She does. She likes it even more. Dislikes it even more if you say if you have no plan, and if you can't even choose a place, like if you just want to go for a cup of coffee, and you can't even choose a place to go for a cup of coffee, she's going to wonder how will you handle the challenges of marriage and family life. So be a man with a plan. So so you know if he calls you up and says, you know, would you like to go out? And you say yes, and, and he has no plan. Just say well. I'm sure you could, I have no idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure you, if you do some research, you could find something that we would both enjoy doing. So why don't you do that and right. call me back? <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. really, that, that's really important. And I, I know uh, one of the women I was coaching, she said she was in this, uh, this program where they, you know, help women find the man of their dreams. And they say, you know, he has to be, has to have a plan. He can't let leave it to you. Just say, whatever you want, we'll do. Just Tell him he has to come up with a plan. Right. So I, I mean, it comes up. So it's like if you say it in a nice way, then he's okay. And then and then don't criticize him. Even if he didn't like it, just because then he'll be discouraged. Because that's what men are afraid of. Men they don't want to be criticized, and that's why he's being passive. Just choose a place. Tell him I'm sure you could find a place. And so and everything else. It's like when a, a, a man comes home from work. And he says, what do you want me to do? Just tell me what you want me to do. He says, you know, I appreciate you doing all this, but I really need your help. Part of your, uh, the help that I need from you is helping solve the problems. Right. You know, you see, it's, you know, I can't make, figure out the solutions to everything. I really, and you're smart. I want you to know what's going on and let you come forward with some solutions of how we can solve this problem. Don't just leave it to me. Like, don't just leave it to me to find the solution, then tell me, tell you what to do. So it's all those things. You know, it's like you're encouraging, take that, sh show that share of leadership, not be controlling, but don't leave it all to her because it's very frustrating for her. Like, it's like women have told me they're just so fed up with like everything I have to decide, every problem I have to, to solve. You know, she she wants the woman to step forward and wear the pants. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with you. You know, it's funny you say that because like for years when I was dating in my dating years, it was like I got so sick of dating men that were so passive. And it was like I had to wear the pants. I had to make the decisions. I had to make sure about this and that and everything else. And it was a turnoff to me. And then I finally, I met my husband and my husband did wear the pants. And that was one of the things I think that drew me to him was his strength, his boldness, his, him trying to take that leadership role, but not over domineer it. You know, he, he knew where that medium was, that happy medium was. And that was one of the things that actually attracted me to him was the fact that he knew how to play the leadership role. Oh, absolutely. And it's not about, but you see, so many men today have heard, well, that's being controlling. We hear all these negative things like toxic masculinity. I mean, I, I, nobody it should be abusive, but if, if, you, if you're so afraid of being accused of being controlling, that's what you think. This way, she cannot accuse me of being controlling. Right. And then if she makes a decision and it's a lousy restaurant that she chose, she <laughs> cannot blame me. <laughs> because I didn't choose that. that that's I don't want to be blamed I mean you know you know men makes an effort he wants to feel he's doing good but if, if if he if he just uh if he tries and then you criticize him it's it's very discouraging oh yeah but a man has to realize you know you know think where is it where, where what is a place that you would both enjoy doing it and not I would just dealing with problems in the family he he feels a lot of men feel and they work very hard 
and they come home and they're exhausted. And I, I tell them, you know, you, you think, hey, well, you know, it's, it's, it's you're, you're doing this because you want to have a nice life for your family. In the same way, you have to save some energy to step, when you come home, step forward and deal with the problems that you see are, are going on for the same reason, because you want to have a nice life for your family. Right. If all you're doing is providing money, you know, people get divorced. Your wife will still get the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe me. So, you know, she really wants a man. And, and like what you, exactly what you described, who's strong, who's bold, who seizes something. I, we got to do this. That, you know, doesn't just wait. Tell me what to do. I'll do it. And, and, you know, so many, so many, so many men I've met just thought, well, I'll just do whatever she wants. That's, that's the safest thing to do. Yeah. Right. I think too, you know, like you mentioned a good pointer, you said um, communication and criticism. So, you know, it's, it goes like at a two part way. So if you do have, a, if you do want that man to take the leadership role, if he doesn't do things exactly the way you want, you still should commend him for trying, you know, and right. not criticize him. Because I think once a person puts a negative criticism into the air, I think that's really going to, you know, force him to back away and and want less and want to do that leadership role less and less and less. So, you know, instead of saying if he does something, he tries to take the leadership role, give him a pat on the back, you know, commend him, whether it's something that you really liked or not like, give him credit for making the effort, I think. Absolutely. And I, that's one of the things I talk about in, in the book is if, you know, you've encouraged him to take the lead. And what if he wants to do something that you don't agree with? So tell him in a way that you're trying to help him, not not criticize him. They like, don't say, well, that's a stupid thing. Then he'll right. back off. But say, well, have you thought of this? Or, you know, I had this other idea for this. Like, tell him in a way that shows you care about him and you want to help him. That That's the most important thing. And, and, and that applies in every situation, not in, only in a relationship between a man and a woman. But, you know, if a manager and a, an employee, to ch try to always try to help them. Say it in right. a way, I want to help you. I think, have you considered this idea? Oh, that's, you know, so he'll say, oh, that's a good idea. Don't attack him because he'll just back off. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. I met so many men who would say to me, I tried to show leadership. I tried to take the lead. But she just, you know, criticized me. She undermined me. And I and I just gave up. And And so I said, well, you know, she may have been challenging you to see if you really mean it. Like sometimes if a woman, uh, you know, you have to decide if she gives you criticism, is it is she undermining you or is she actually giving you valuable feedback, but she doesn't do it in a, in a helpful way. Right. She's trying to undermine you. I say, I see, she's, maybe she's testing you. See, women test men, right? So, mm -hmm. she, <laughs> so maybe she's testing you to see if you really mean to be a leader. So if she's undermining, I tell men, just say, I think this is important. Would you please support me on this? Right. When you ask for what you want, then she will support you most of the time. Yes, I agree. Totally. A hundred percent. You know, and I, I think, you know, people have to realize too, that sometimes we assume that the other spouse or the other partner or the, the person you're with is can read your mind, but unless yeah. you're verbally expressive and you talk to the person, you're not going to be able to understand what that person's wants or needs is. So, you know, I think communication is key. Don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you're talking about reading minds and, and what I hear so often is, you know, Men and women have very clear ideas what they want in a, a you know, a partner. Yeah. But but yes, the other person. What is, what do you think? Like I, I I did a little survey asking women, what's the most important thing a man wants from a wife? And you know, I did the small survey. Inevitably, the person, the woman would say, sex. That's the most important thing a man wants. And I said, well, you know what? Maybe he, if he's dating a girl, that's what he wants. <laughs> but if he marries her, there's something more important that he wants. Right. And like they, they're sort of like, oh, appreciation, respect. Yeah, he wants all those things. He really wants a partner. He wants a partner who's going to be beside him, going to help him through the challenges of life. You know, right. oh, he'll climb those mountains together. That's what he wants. Yeah, he wants sex and he wants the respect and appreciation. But the most important thing, and when you see men say, you know, my wife, if it, you know, I achieved this. I couldn't have done it without my wife. Right. The other men will say, oh, I wish I had a wife like that. Yeah. But, yeah. but then and on the other side, you, know, <laughs> you ask men, like, what's the most important thing uh, a woman wants from a man? Very few will understand that she really wants a man who makes her feel safe and protected, who makes her feel cherished. Yeah. So, it's like, it's so... Like nobody says that today. So, but 
if you talk to women one on one, I say, yeah, I want a man. When you when a man does that, when a man makes decisions like like what you were describing about your husband, it makes me feel safe and protected. Mm -hmm. And and men just don't know that. So that's when you talk about communication and education, it's like. That's why I wrote these books. Like, this is yeah. what men and women want. <laughs> it, it's very true. It's so true. And, you know, I, I think, you know, as generations have changed, people's, you know, mindset have changed. And sometimes I wonder if it, if it's for the good or for the bad, you know, because, it, you know, like you said, many, many views on, on you know, being a man have changed over the course of the years. You know, um, maybe in the younger generation, you know, they did show leadership, but maybe some of them were too domineering and then as uh, you know but that you have to have that happy medium so what would you consider that happy medium like you know without crossing the line because some people could be a little too much um right you know and then you you don't want too little and you don't want too much you don't want to feel like you're being controlled by that person that you're with right. you want right. that 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 balance between the two of you so what would you say that balance is and how do you achieve that well i mean i, I I, I think it's it's up to each person to really like you have to think before you do anything before you say anything like is this being domineering controlling am I including my my partner in in making this decision you know you, you don't want someone who's just like we're doing this we're doing that I don't want to hear anything you say uh, you know there one of the quotes in one of the books it says you know it talks about a balance it says if you, you should if a man never listens to his wife he should listen to his wife but mm -hmm. if he's always just doing whatever his wife tells him, his life will be hell. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's so it's really, in the, but so it says, it's really a balance. It's like, listen, make an effort to listen to your wife, but don't just, you're not her servant. You're not just there. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. It's it's really right in the middle. Right. And you, you just have to use your judgment to make sure that that's what, uh, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and it's funny you said about, um about, you know, how women said, you know, what do men want? And they want sex. And, it's, you know, it's funny because when we go out, a lot of times we go out with our friends and we go in big groups of couples. And, you know, all you hear about the man, they would talk about sex, food and sports. Right, and we look nice. at each other and we're like, is this all they think about all the time? Is this all they want? You know, business also. <laughs> <laughs> business too. Yes. That's another topic that comes up all the time. And it's like, you know, what else consumes their brain? And it's funny that you say that they look for strength. They look for, you know, that person that they could rely on. They want that protection and leadership just as much as the woman does. But in, in they exemplify it differently because they're a man and, and we're a woman. Right, right, right. No, no. It's interesting what you say about uh, about what people, men and women, talking about. Because if you go into Starbucks, right, and you're sitting there, and there's a group of women talking, they're always talking about relationships. I'm not always. Yeah, yeah, a good portion. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, they're talking about their husbands. They're complaining about their husbands. Or their, <laughs> you know, he's done this. He didn't do this. And and the men are talking about you know politics. You know, they like mm -hmm. politics. Yeah. And. Uh, and sports and business and uh, that sort of thing. But you know what? That just shows you men and women are different. <laughs> yes. And when they came out with that book, you know, men are, what was it? Men, men are from um, Venus. Mars. Are from Mars. Or where is it? Is it opposite? Did I, did I get it mixed up? Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Yes. And, it, and, you know, and those are two great books. Those are written about what, two decades ago. Yeah. It yeah, was right. like, it was, it, it showed you how different men and women are, but we are similar species, but we view things differently and we do things differently. So, you know, it's, it's finding that balance like you're talking about right now. Right. Right. And it's okay. I mean, that's, it's okay. It's uh, there's nothing wrong with men talking about what they want to talk about, and that's why it's good for men to have male friends, <laughs> and women to have women friends, so they can talk about things they want to talk about. But uh, no, it's it, it, but they're different, and that's and that's okay, and that's okay, and that's what I mean. That's what makes a relationship uh, exciting. Or you know, if if you're two identical people, well, what would you need in a person who's identical to you? It's exactly. How would you? Now, when it comes to leadership, like with our generation today, and so many people come to you and they're like, 
okay, you know, my, my marriage is failing or my relationship's failing and, you know, it's, it's not working, you know, and, you know, um, you know, they're, they're always saying that I'm indecisive or this or that. And, you know, what are some of the tips that you could give a person, you know, to help them start to improve their relationship or start to, you know, not have to change themselves to please another person, but change themselves a little bit. So the other spouse or partner is happier with them, you know, together. Right, right. No, that's a great question. And, and well, as a coach, you know, this as well, that very often a person comes into a situation and they think the only solution is the other person to change. Right. And, and they, you know, just, don't, I don't see anything. The, that person has to change. You just, and they, and you know, the problem with couples counseling is, you know, each you know, the couple comes and each one tells the counselor, well, they they have to the other person has to change. The other you know, all the faults the other person, <laughs> and, and and you never get around to like, well, what do you have to do? And so when I I coach men, I say, you know, I I, I can tell the other person to change, but I can give you some ideas of how you can solve your own problems by changing the way you treat your spouse and, right. or what you do. And, and like, like I said, a lot of men just don't realize, you know, I remember talking to one fellow, he says he was getting divorced and he says, his wife doesn't like that. He always talks about his feelings and men here today here. Oh, you're supposed to talk about your feelings. I said, I said, you know, talk about your feelings once in a while, you know, if somebody you love died. Okay. Talk about your, but don't come home every day talking about your feelings because it doesn't make her feel safe right. and protected. So he, here he's thinking I'm right. She, oh, and he said, well, if I get remarried, I'm sure my new wife will appreciate me talking about always about my feelings. Don't <laughs> you have to change yourself. So that's really, the thing is the only way to change a situation is by changing yourself, right? You can you yeah. Right. The only person you change is yourself. Exactly. So how do you have to change? Like, look at yourself, look at your own behavior and, and, and realize, oh, gee, you know, maybe I should be different. Maybe, you know, just waiting to be told what to do all the time is not the right thing. Maybe she wants me to take charge. And really, and you know what? I've coached men on this and it's it's so wonderful to, to have them come back to me and says, you know, I, I did what you told me to do. And, and she said, you make me feel safe and protected. I said, you know, I've heard those two words like so many times. Like, wow, like, yeah, it's fantastic. And, and you're teaching them things they didn't know. So yeah. the main thing is that, that so, so when as a coach, it's like making a person aware of what they need to do because they think they're all right and they're all right. They're good people. They want right. to be good people. But it's like, you know, you've listened to all this stuff in the media. You're, you're not, these things are not helpful. So how, yeah. how do you have to change yourself and the way you treat her? You know, you know <laughs> one thing, like I tell, tell on the first date, I tell men, when you're dating a woman, on the first date especially, pay for her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pay for her. And like men will think, oh, but she offered to pay. So I I'm thought I'm showing, I believe in equality. I let her pay. <laughs> she was testing you to see if you insist on paying. Yes. And like, <laughs> so you know what? Here, here's a guy who's like a successful lawyer. Doesn't know, doesn't know. listen. When you take her out, pay for her, especially the first yeah. date. If she offers to flip the bill or she offers to pay, don't don't let her. <laughs> she yeah. wants to see if you'll insist on paying. People don't know that. Like they really, they've heard all this stuff about. Oh yeah, I don't know what I've heard men say. Whoever makes the most money should pay, or where you know, just just pay for her. <laughs> If you want a second date, pay for her. <laughs> right. I think it's, you know, it, it's because there's so much misinformation in the media. People, you know, they read and they just, don't, they don't realize that one, the information could be wrong or two, it may not apply to you and your own personality and your relationship that you're in. You know, you could read lots of stuff, but it doesn't mean that it necessarily works or applies to right. your life. No, that that's the thing. Men today have heard all these messages, and they're they're doing them, and they think, well, why is she, why does she want to divorce me? I'm doing all these. I'm doing. I'm being the modern 21st century man that I'm supposed to be. Why is she so frustrated with me? You know, I, I, they don't they don't realize that these ideas they're just they're they're ideas that they're not they don't really work. It, yeah. it's, it's, and it's sad. It's sad to see two good people getting divorced because you know, the man thinks he's doing the right thing and she's just fed up with him. It's, it's sad yeah. when you can say, Hey, you know, you, you, you're not being the kind of man she wants. And and men will say to me, I've heard this so many times. No one's ever told me this before. If I had known this, 
when I was married, maybe I wouldn't be divorced today. Right. I've had that lots of times. Oh yeah. You know, I, I had the funniest thing was when I had, well, it's not funny, but I had a couple come in and they, you know, the woman was like, I feel like we changed private party pots. You know, she was like, I feel like I'm, I'm wearing, you know, I have the blah, 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 blah. And he has the blah, 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 you know? And it's, you know, because if you think about it, it was funny because like the other day I was watching Lion King last night, it was on TV and in, you go thousands of years, even back to the animals, you know, and it was always the lion was the one in charge and the, you know, the, and the, the, you know, the tigers followed and, you know, there was always one that held the rock that people felt safe and they wanted, they, they admired that person for their strength, you know, and right, right. I think it follows through as, as, you know, thousands of years later, we still look for that security, that safeness, that pro pro, you know protection, and you know it's nice when you can you know feel that you could re you know, rely and you could have a rock you know whether you know and especially for a woman I think it's it's a it's a good feeling when you can rely on the person and you know that person is going to be there for you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and men have I mean the men have heard that but those those are old fashioned ideas right they're not you know that's from the past that's but you know you're living in the past those are old fashioned ideas women today don't want that well believe me they do nothing you know the human nature hasn't changed over thousands of years you know one of the stories i like to tell and the book's not religious at all but i do quote the story from genesis of adam and mm -hmm. eve right there in the garden of eden one commandment don't eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge and eve eats it and she pushes adam to eat it and then he's hiding and god says him did you eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge i command you not to eat what does he say he says, the woman you sent me gave it to me and I ate it. I said, you know, I couldn't believe it. I said, he gave it to something he knew was wrong. Then he blamed his wife. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought only men today did that. Really? Yeah. When I, I'm not like, it's I, the story's not religious. I just think this story yeah, has yeah, been yeah. around thousands of years. So that's what men today do that. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all did. Yeah. It's like you blame the other person. So it's like, so does he get away with it? no he's punished for it it's like so i tell men like you blame your wife he says you know what you're responsible you you're, you let your wife run up fifty thousand dollars on the credit cards why did you let it go on don't you you could blame her but people will say to you well you're the man you have children how could you let that go on take responsibility for what's going on in your family nobody will have any sympathy for someone right. who says I'm, I'm the victim of a woman there's no sympathy. So since there's no sympathy, you you better not let it happen. Yeah. Because you can't you can't just blame her. And and that's that's one of the things I say. If something is wrong, you know, you, you can't just go along with it. It's like you, you have to be the man and step forward and say, No, we can't do this. This is not affordable right now. We can't buy this right now. And and you know, be strong. And I tell men, you know, just because she pressures you into it, you know, if you told her we can't afford this, and then she pressures you it doesn't suddenly become affordable. You have to right. be a man and, and step forward because ultimately, and I've seen this too many times, you know, you give in and the financial stress just destroys your marriage. You know, oh, hundred percent. So for the sake of your marriage, your family, your children, you have to say, well, not right now. We'll look at it, you know, in six months, a year, whatever, but that's your job. And because you can't blame her, right. you're the one who's responsible. Take responsibility. That's what I tell men. Show leadership, make decisions, take responsibility. Don't blame your wife <laughs> because you're gonna, you're the man. You're the man. That's a you're you're not. You're, and people say you're not being a man if you let that go on. I think it's getting much more difficult now because, like now, people's mind frames have changed so much from when the way it was that you know you have a lot of um, people who are training their children to grow up and to do things differently than what it was before so you know how do you break that cycle well i mean it's true but you know ultimately human nature it hasn't changed that's really one of the main messages of my book human nature what a woman wants what a man wants what a, what a woman expects of a man really hasn't changed right so all these messages like we say that you know parents taught their kids you know it's it's ultimately you, you know it, that's really the underlying problem is we've heard all these messages and they're not really working and 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 really human nature is a woman really wants a man to be a man yes and and the man really wants his wife to be his partner and really 
I, I don't think anything has changed. When you talk to men, I talk to men and women, they really, they say, you know, I was just talking to a woman who's divorced. She says, you know, I didn't feel my husband would protect me. Really, it's interesting. Out of the blue, she's telling me she's divorced and she didn't feel her husband would protect her in a difficult situation. I said, oh, look at that. that that's, you'd think that's old-fashioned thinking. It hasn't changed. That's that's yeah. really... I know, I, I know for me and for many people I've spoken to, they, they all look for that, you know, no matter what age group you're in, I, I hear it from, you know, they all want to feel safe, protected. They want to feel, you know, financially secure. They want to know that, you know, if something happens, that other person will be there that will, you know, that will, you know, take that leadership role or work with you side by side and as a team, you know, make those goals or whatever they need to do for whatever reason happen. Exactly, exactly. That that's that's it. And and so many of the messages we hear today are, are no one's no one's talking about that. Men are just they're they're just I don't want to say they're clueless because it's not nice, but so many of them like I you know, somebody could say to me, uh, you know, he's been married over thirty years and you know, I'm telling him things and he never you know, never thought of those things, never heard those things before. Yeah. So, so that's my mission to save you know, the marriages of the world. And I because yeah. It's like I say, like most, I think most of the divorces, the people are good people. They're just kind of lost. Like most divorces are initiated by women. And I really believe it's because the man is not being the kind of man she wants him to be. Yes. And he, he, he often doesn't have a clue. Right. I shouldn't laugh because like, he, he really doesn't have a clue. Oh, is this what you want? I, I didn't realize that. You know, if I would have known things would have been different. I've had that, like I said earlier, so many times it's, uh, you know, nobody told me this. If I would have known this, I probably wouldn't be divorced. I see that all the time. And, and, you know, and even in, in friendships of mine, you know, it's, it's funny people will be married 25, 30 years. And I'm like, how do I know your wife better than you? And I've only been friends with her for X amount of years. I'm like, right. where is your, your head? You know, like, hello, you know, and sometimes it doesn't click, you know, people, sometimes they have to get out of their own gray box and they really have to, you know, look at the situation and really look at it and, and, and see it for what it really is, you know, not for what they want it to be, but what it, it needs to be and should be. And then think about what they need to do to compensate and to help that situation, you know, go in a positive direction, I think. Right. Right. And but like I say, like, where do they get that direction? I mean, you know, I, I remember one fellow I was coaching. He says, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I want to be a nice guy. I let my wife make all the decisions because I want to be a nice guy. And I said, and why does she treat you so badly? <laughs> I, I shouldn't laugh, but she, why does she treat you so badly? Because that's not what she wants. She really wants a man who takes charge and show, shows leadership. And, and then he, he ended up getting divorced. And now in his new marriage, he is that kind of man. He, and he, and there, he's much happier. He has a happy marriage now. Good. So, so yeah, that, it, it's really, that's really what my goal is to educate people on the wisdom that used to be taught to men and women about being, uh, you know, husband and wife and, and, uh, you know, stop, you know, reduce the number of, of divorces, reduce the number of children from broken homes. Very right. sad to see so many. Um, but that's the goal. That's my goal. <laughs> now, where can people find your website? Where can they find information about you? Okay. The website is Elliot, uh, Elliot Katz, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, K-A-T-Z.com. That's my website. And the uh, books are available, the two books, uh, Being the Strong Man and Woman Wants, and how to get your man to wear the pants, inspiring him to make more decisions, take the lead and stop leaving it all to you. Uh, they're available on Amazon as a paperback, an ebook, and an audio book. Oh, excellent. Now, do you have like, do you have a blog on your website? Do you have articles or information or do you do any type of videos or anything like that, that people can get information? Or you know what? I'm, I'm just starting to do that. I'm just going to start doing that. I, I, I've done articles for different websites and I'm going to start putting them together. Um, but, and, and, you know, people can contact me. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to talk to people. Um, I, I, this is, like I said, I'm retired. This isn't really a, a business. It's really a mission. I, I really feel, you know, when I see so many children from broken homes, yeah, that, that not necessary. So, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to share what I've learned, you know, like so many other, 
things. You know, I've, I've gone through all this, learn, I've learned a lot of things that I wish I had known years ago. Right. And I, I want to share them with other people because they made a difference to me and they make, they make a difference to the people I've shared them with. I think that's and, wonderful. Yeah. It's amazing. Like I said, the first book, 25 languages it's been translated into. It's like, that was a surprise. That's amazing. That's, that that's was a really surprise amazing. to me. Uh, that's great. And and people, can they can they schedule um, coaching um, sessions yeah. with you on your website? Absolutely. Just, uh, well, just email me through the website and we'll set something up. And uh, I usually do the first half hour for free, just to, you know, get feel each other out, make sure we're, right. uh, you know, we're on the same page. And uh, no, I'm happy to. Yeah, just it's website, Elliot Katz, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, two T's. People usually spell with one. My mother spelled it with two. <laughs> K-A-T-Z. <laughs> And uh, no, contact me and I'm glad to help. And, uh, you know, because like I said, you know, so many people, and I, you know, very often the, one of the first things people say, well, I, we went to couples counseling and it didn't work. I say, yeah, <laughs> it often doesn't work, but uh, yeah. let's let's try this, you know? Right. Let's try this. Got nothing to lose, all, only to gain. Exactly, 100%. It's been a pleasure having you, Elliot. Thank you so much for coming on and I wish you the best of luck. And I think what you're doing is great. I think, you know, a lot of people need help, you know, and sometimes the simplest changes in a relationship can change the relationship a hundred percent. And you can go from zero to a hundred just by changing just a few little things in the relationship. And I think some of the points you gave were great today. Before we go, are there any couple of things that you'd like to maybe some, any tips or pointers you'd like to maybe give the listeners before we go that, that we're listening, that can relate to what you're saying that needs some help? Well, the main thing is, like I tell men, you know, show leadership, make decisions, take responsibility. And and the same for women, it's like, encourage a man to show leadership. Like, don't always, when he leaves every decision, every problem to solve to you, just say, I need you to solve it. You're smart. You'd be really helpful. And and we, when he asks him to make a decision and he says, you decide, he says, I want you, I asked you because I want to know what you want. <laughs> or if he says to you, if he says to you, whatever you want, that's what they always say. Whatever you want, just say, what I want is to know what you want. Ah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's great. But thank you, Stacey, for having me, because I think you're doing great things with your show. It's, it's, you know, people really benefit from what you're doing. And so it's really wonderful. I congratulate um... you on that. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you. And I hope we can have you back on the show and then you can share some more insight. It'd be great. Okay. Thank you, Stacey. You Love have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.